Praise God. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the online church. And this is um, the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We were just talking about, talking with Ryan Trogler about how God is blessing Ryan's brother. So we're going to ask Ryan just come on back and give us a summary of, of how his brother is doing. Uh, Ryan, can you do that again for us, please? Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I will. Well, let me start beginning. I'll make it real really quick here. Um, my brother had a, a, not a massive, but a, a severe stroke, and the doctor said that he would be confined to a wheelchair <coughs> excuse me, for the rest of his life, and uh, he would be paralyzed pretty much on his right side. So in the meantime, I went and, and prayed some prayers over him and uh, book, uh, out of Jer- the book of Jeremiah and the book of James, and I said the sinner's prayer and the, and, the, and how to be saved in the Roman chapter 10, uh, verse 9 and 10, I said those over him. And I, when I laid my hands on him and I felt, I could feel the energy or whatever what, from, from God, I just felt it coming through me and into my brother's body. I felt it coming out of my hand and into, and into my brother. And I said, and I, and I think I did tell you, I remember telling you that. That's, yes, yes, I, yes, I, I yes. Did, I, <laughs> last last I did. week you told me, he said, hey, dude, I felt that too. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> God for that. And then two days later, he was, he was starting to uh, get his feeling back. He was starting to walk. And then up to date, as of as of uh, Thursday or Friday, just this past Thursday or Friday here, uh, he's been walking the hospital halls, which is you know probably about a mile long, and uh, I'm not sure how long they are, but uh, they they make him walk that three times a day, mm-hmm. and he's walking. He, like I said, he's he's got his he's starting to get his speech back, and then he's and he's starting to use getting the use of his his right side back. So he's he's not going to be wheelchair bound, and I and I. I build, I'm trying to build him up and give him all the confidence in the world, and I keep praying to God that he's going to heal him. And you know what, God, if 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 you've never seen a miracle, he would be he would be the best testimony for God, right there. Hallelujah! Praise God. He's not going to be wheelchair bound. Praise God. He's going to have yep. his speech. He's going to walk. Hallelujah! And no paralysis in his side or in his body. Hallelujah. We're talking about a miracle, ladies and gentlemen. And Ryan, describe to them again, to us again, how it felt when God told you to go lay hands on him. Tell us what happened. Well, like I said, when I put my, I, I was saying the prayers and stuff over him, and I had my hand on his on his left shoulder, <clears throat> and I started to get really hot. And I actually was sweating. I was, I felt like I was on fire. Somebody set me on fire. Mm. And, and I was really sweating, but the air, the room had to be air had to be cooled due to the fact of, of the machine all the machines that were in there, so they could stay cool. And <clears throat> once I once I felt it felt like a an electrical surge going through my right hand into his left shoulder, and, I, and that's when I said, I said, dude, did you feel that? And he goes, yeah, dude, I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> and I took and. I was still hot, and I took my hand off, and the Lord said, no, 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 no. He goes, I ain't done. He goes, you put your hand back up on him. Mm, yeah. so, I put my, so, so I put my hand back up on his shoulder, and then about 10 to 15 minutes later, the Lord said, I'm done. He said, I, he, so I took my hand off, and I started to cool down. So I wouldn't, you know, felt like somebody extinguished the fire, but I knew the fire, uh, the God, God used me to uh, – put his healing power into my brother. So when he, when I started to cool down, he said, he said, now you can take your hand off. Praise God. For you. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. You heard it from Ryan Trogler. You heard it from up in Marysville, Pennsylvania. Ryan said the Lord said for him, him to put his hands, lay his hands on his brother. Ryan was nervous. He was scared. He was shaking. He was scared, as we say down here in Georgia. <laughs> but he trusted God, and he felt like an electrical surge go through his hand and and he Ryan even said to his brother, Dude, did you feel that? <laughs> and his brother, Yes, dude, I felt that. Amen. Pray. I mean his brother was all medicated and everything and, and, and doctors talking about paralysis. But he said, Yes, dude, I felt that. Praise God before long. Now his brother's up and walking, hallelujah, the paralysis is leaving his body. 
We serve a mighty God, and Ryan Trogler is a witness, ladies and gentlemen. And not only is Ryan a witness, but we've got witnesses online who heard a part of this testimony last week and hearing it again. Dustina, Dustina, come in, Dustina, from Tennessee and tell us what you think about this and, and share with us. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. I was just typing in the chat and I was fixing to say, you know, we got to understand God's timing is a lot different than our timing. Ryan's brother's already been healed in the supernatural. Now we're seeing it manifest in the natural. So praise God. He, he's a living testimony, and I've been praying, and I am so, so blessed to hear this. It's, it's, he is going to reach many people when this is final and done, and he is up walking and testifying what the Lord's done for him. And it, it's incredible. And I'm, I'm blessed to know Ryan and that he took the authority and the power that God gave him to pray over his brother and to have that faith to do that because a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't receive it, but he did, and I, I thank you, Ryan. <laughs> thank you for being obedient to God and doing that and helping your brother. And, you know, I tell you what, I, I wish more people had faith like that because God said that we would do even greater things than he did when he walked this earth. And we are just the vessels. The power doesn't come from us. It comes from God. God is the ultimate healer. He is the power. It has, it has to take the faith of us to believe that God can do it. Not us. All glory to God. So I have that amazing testimony. And I was going to say while I'm on here, if y'all could please pray for my son's school. I had posted on Facebook. On, it was on the news. Um, two girls committed suicide this past week. So if y'all could, please pray. It's an epidemic going on in our schools and countywide, and something needs to be done, be done about it, and not enough being done with the bullying. So if y'all could, just please go in prayer with me in agreement that something is done to help these children to reach them somehow to get this to stop. And I know it's the enemy. I know it's just the enemy attacking our children. We're in those days, and he's getting the children. So just just please, it's, it's been a very emotional week with that. So if you could just please pray in agreement that we can get something done, that God can do something. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Dustina, for sharing with along with Ryan, his testimony and, and how it impacted you. Also, we're, we're going to be praying for uh, your children's school. Um, you might want to consider seeking the Lord for a prayer walk. Get some of those parents out there and walk around that school. You don't have to walk on the school property, but you can walk around that school or walk near that school and bind those demons that have impacted those children. They've been... They had suicides there last year and probably the year before. So bind that demon of suicide. Bind Satan. Bind those powers, principalities, ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Your prayers, the effect, the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous, Dustina, avail much. God may be looking for some people who are willing. It doesn't take a whole group of people. It takes just a, uh, if two are in agreement. And if you, if you can't find another, you go by it yourself. But trust the Lord, Dustina. We'll be praying with you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You think about that. Pray about that, Dustina. Okay? These children are precious in God's sight. And Satan is a liar. He's the father of lies. He will always be a liar. But he's going to get his due. He's going to get his due. That's, as they say, give Dinky his due. Dinky's going to get his due. Okay, Dustina? Amen, yes sir, and I've already been praying on it, and we have a parent chat online where we talk and commute about things that's going on in the community and with the schools, so I will be talking with them and see what they think and what 
what we can do because it has to be the parents and the staff that stand up. These children aren't going to come to us willingly if they have something going on. We have to reach out to them and talk to them and yes. see what's going on. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. They, made a, they made a website for students to take a test and which turned up being a glitch they said if you made a 90 or below that they would pull you into the office and the counselors and speak to you well everybody made a 90 and they found out there was a glitch in the system and we all agreed that's not the way to go you're not going to reach children through a website you have to go to them and speak to them verbally Man, okay. And we know the spiritual, and you know who the enemy is. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. So get your handful of people and find those demons. Find that, that, sanctify that land, sanctify that school unto the Lord. You don't need to have, to have a group of people around it. You don't have to call a press conference. You don't even have to have the superintendent's uh, 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 permission to do this. Get some people and do this. You're a warrior, Dustina. You're a warrior. And uh, uh, be like, you know, I'm a Green Beret. And, and, and we'd sneak into a country and plant an explosive. Uh, you, you, you can do this by night. You can do this by day. You don't have to have advertisement about it. But bind those demons. You see, Satan is territorial. He thinks he runs that territory. He thinks he can destroy those children. But, but one of us can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to play. So get your partner and go and, 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 and drop some oil on that land and pray the prayer of faith and bind up Satan and his demonic forces. And, and then let the, let the community do what they want to do with their meetings and all that sort of thing. But you bind those demon spirits. Go ahead, Dustina. We'll yeah. talk to you later. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Well, and I will be calling the FCA too. So. Yes, yes. Okay. We were... We believe God for a blessing, Nathan and, and FCA and the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Get them in on that. Okay. They're, 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 the time for meetings is about over. There's a time when we just got, got to get out there uh, like Joshua. We've got to get out there like Gideon and, and, and do what the Lord says to, no matter how crazy it may seem. Look, look, can you imagine Ryan Trugger driving his 18-wheeler down uh, uh, the Pennsylvania Turnpike and turning off onto another highway, and Ryan sees a hospital, and the Spirit of the Lord comes upon Ryan, and Ryan says, oh, there are sick in there. I must park my truck. I must go in there and lay hands on the sick. Somebody needs me to lay hands on. Ryan, God's going to unleash, God's going to unleash the power, and don't be surprised if you do that, but do it decently and in order. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let's just take time right now, right where you are. Let's just take some time right now, where you are. Just lift your hands to the Lord, just where you are. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Now, if you're driving, if you're driving, don't lift your hands to the Lord. But those of us who don't have our hands on the steering wheel, lift your hands to the Lord and just say, pray. just give God some praise. Wherever you are, you can mute your phone if you want to so that nobody hears you but God. But just lift up your hands to the Lord. I'm doing that here. Let's just give God uh, 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 30 seconds or 60 seconds of praise. Father, we thank you. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. You're worthy to be praised. There's none other like you. Come on, everybody. Just praise God for who he is. Lord, there's none like you. You are the mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. There's no failure in you, Lord. We put our trust in you, Lord God. You said you'd never make us ashamed who put our trust in you. Thank you, Father, for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. That feels good, ladies and gentlemen. Your body's starting to feel good. Your mind's going to feel, feel good. So let's just give God 30 more seconds. Oh, Father, we worship you. We've come to worship you. We're here at the online church. We worship you. We lift up holy hands unto you, Lord God. We bless you and praise you, Lord God. You're a wonderful, Lord. Some of you have ne may have never done this before, but just get into the flow. Father, we thank you. Thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, what you're going to do. And Lord, bless on the online church today. Somebody needs you, Lord God. And we're blessing you. We're praising you. We thank you for what you've done in Ryan's brother already. We thank you for what you're going to do in Dustina's children's school. 
We thank you for what you're doing all across this nation and the nations. We thank you for what you're doing in the nations that are listening by way of the recording. We praise you, Father, and we give you the glory. You are the mighty God. There is nothing you cannot do, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, bless God, ladies and gentlemen. Bless God. We praise God. We thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask Miss Jackie Fisher, Mrs. Jackie Fisher, to come on and uh, at this time, and she's going to, we're going to ask her to read the scripture. It's the same scripture we had last week, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and um, we're going to focus on 9 through 11, but I want to ask Jackie to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and start with um, verse 9 and go through 20. 9 through 20, Jackie Fisher is going to read the scripture. Okay, good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning. Can you all hear me now? Yes. Okay. Praise be to the Lord. First Corinthians 6, 9 through 20. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. God to be glorified in the body. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and the belly for meat. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up, up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-20 through Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie Fisher. Thank you for reading the scriptures for us. Praise God. That scripture is so powerful. The word of God is powerful, ladies and gentlemen. That is why God wants us to study, to show ourselves approved unto him, workmen who need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I thank God. Thank God for this ministry. I thank God for what he's doing. A lot of what uh, Paul writes in, 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 in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, he deals with fornication and adultery. You see, the people in Corinth Corinth was a very famous town in Greece, but many of them were sexually uh, corrupt. They were sexually corrupt. I mean, homosexuality was rampant in Paul's age. The Greeks, the Greeks were notorious for practicing homosexuality, sodomy, uh, same-sex relationships, and, and Paul had to go against that. They wanted to kill Paul. Uh, they wanted to stone him to death 
But Paul was bold and he taught them. Even, ladies and gentlemen, even after people got saved and the church was organized in the church in Corinth, even after Aquila and Priscilla and others organized their church in, in Corinth, Paul had to deal with some sexual sins that were atrocious. For example, one man was having a sexual relationship with his father's wife. Ladies and gentlemen, the man was having a sexual relationship with his father's wife. She was not his mother, but she was his father's wife. Now, the book of Leviticus warns us against these relationships with cousins and sisters and brothers and, and this sort of thing. And, and uh, the Bible even tells us don't even look at a person who's naked. Uh, your, 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 your father's wife or your, your son's uh, wife or your daughter-in-law, you, you're not even to look at them if they're naked. So Paul had to deal with a lot of stuff. And, and look, he's writing this to Christians. 1 Corinthians is written for Christians, ladies and gentlemen, Christians practicing sexual uh, diversions and, and atrocities, um, homosexuality. Homosexuality is nothing new. Uh, the gay lifestyle is nothing new. It goes all the way back to the biblical times. And, and God is against it. God never condoned homosexuality. He never, never uh, condones the gay lifestyle or the lesbian lifestyle. But God loves the people. He loves the people. And if you get saved, then you need to get delivered. What Jackie Fisher just read is a good example of how uh, you can be saved, you can be saved and still be gay, but you're not to stay gay. When you're truly saved, when you when you confess Jesus and you're gay, then you ought, your next step ought to be to seek God to deliver you from the gay lifestyle because uh, God made you to be a man, not a woman, or God made, uh, if you're a lesbian, God made you to be a woman, not a man. And so once you get saved, you're not to stay in that and practice what you're accustomed to doing as a sinner. No, the Holy Ghost is available to deliver you. A lot of preachers don't want to hear this. They don't preach it. And a lot of believers don't want to hear it because they are gay and they want to stay gay. And they take the Bible, Jackie Fisher, and they twist the Bible to support their lifestyle. But you read it and we are witnesses. God is against it. And, 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 and anyone who says, I'm saved, and if you're practicing the gay lifestyle, you ought to get delivered. You ought to repent. You ought to repent from twisting the scripture. You ought to repent from blaspheming God and the Holy Spirit because the Holy Ghost is able to deliver you. If you were born a man, you can act like a man. You ask the Holy Ghost to make you into a man. Uh, if you've been practicing being a girl all your life, it's time to get saved and then start acting like a man. Do not underestimate the Holy Spirit and don't blaspheme God. Some of you out there need to stop blaspheming God and playing with God. Some of you preachers out there ought to stop preaching what you're preaching. We're, we, we are looking in this nation and other nations, preachers who are have congregation. Preachers are gay, and they've got their uh, uh, congregation full of gay people. Pastor, that's you. You've got a great opportunity to get delivered and get your congregation delivered. Why not seek God to make men out of all of you? Uh, 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 we've got lesbian pastors who uh, uh, promote lesbianism, and they attract lesbians, and they worship God. And, and God's not hearing that, ladies and gentlemen. God, look, look, look. God is not a fool. God is not a fool. God, God, and God is not politically correct. God is countercultural. Your culture may promote lesbianism. Your culture may promote uh, the gay lifestyle, but God is not a fool. And so get delivered, get saved, and, and worship God. The power of the Holy Ghost can uh, change everything about you. The power of the Holy Ghost. If you're truly born again, then you ought to take the next step and get truly delivered. Because we're going to take a look in a few minutes. We're going to continue what we did last week. I gave you 10 groups of people last week who will not enter into heaven. 
and, and people who continue practicing the gay lifestyle, the lesbian lifestyle, the people who continue practicing adultery and fornication, even those who continue to practice drinking and, and drunkenness, they're not going to enter into heaven. And church roles are full of people who do this sort of thing. But we do not have to continue in our sins. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? This is Pastor Leroy Carter. You're listening at the online church, and I'm so glad that you're here. Praise God. And uh, this is where you're going to grow. This is where you're growing until God plants you in a brick and mortal church. This is the place to grow. We're going to hear uh, a song. I hope I can get it together this week. We're going to hear a song called Born Again by our friend Kevin Wilson, Born Again. Praise God, praise God. Wonderful song by Kevin Wilson, Spiritual High Ministries. Kevin is in Kentucky. And, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, and uh, uh, those of you who are listening on Facebook and YouTube, we play these songs by Kevin Wilson by permission. He has given us permission. I met Kevin in July, and Kevin said, why, sure, you have my permission to play my songs. And so we play Kevin Wilson's songs. And we're going to try to get another one in at the end of the service. Kevin Wilson, he's making a difference. If you're in the Kentucky, Tennessee area, 
invite Kevin to your service. Invite him to your revival. Invite him to come and bring his band and minister unto the Lord. He's Holy Ghost filled, and, 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 and he will be a blessing. So thanks, Kevin. I want to give a shout out to you. Born again. Kevin said in that song, and ladies and gentlemen, there is no excuse for anybody to continue to live in sin. And, and Kevin says, I'm born again. He says, something happened, and I don't feel the same. He said, I'm born again. He said, I never thought that I would be forgiven for all that I've done. Isn't that a wonderful testimony in that song? I never thought I'd be, give, be forgiven for all that I've done. And when I look back on my life, and when you look back on your life, and even as Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians, he told the Corinthians, and some of you were like these that I'm talking about. Some of you were into these lifestyles, but you've been born again, and you're, and you're changed by the blood of Jesus, by the power of of the Holy Spirit. So there's no excuse for anybody to continue in adultery. There's no excuse for anybody to continue being gay. There's no excuse for anyone to continue being a lesbian. There's no excuse for anyone to continue being a drunkard or drug addicted. God has the power to deliver. Surrender your life to the Lord and trust him. Make Jesus your choice. Well, bless God. Ladies and gentlemen, last week I preached a message about 10 people, 10 groups of people who will not go to heaven. And in that less in that group in that group I'm just, just going to re recite the number of uh the people in that group. Number 1, the sexually immoral. Number 2, idolaters. In other words, those who have false gods. You know, people can be a false god in your life. You know, your wife can be a, an idol. Your husband can be a, an idol if you put them before God. Number three, adulterers will not enter into heaven. Now, in this list, and we mentioned last week, and I will reiterate this week, if, if you're practicing this, you can get delivered. You can repent and ask God to deliver you from it and get out of it, and you will go to heaven. But if you're going to be stubborn and proud and hard-hearted and stiff-necked and keep on doing what uh, God says not to do and, 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 and defy God to his face, hey, ain't no way, ain't no way God's going to let you into heaven. The Bible says Jesus will say, and he, no matter how many churches you built, no matter how many sermons you built, no matter how many times you laid hands on the sick, no matter how many times you fed the hungry, uh, if, if, if you continue to sin and would not yield to the Spirit of the Lord and obey God, God is not going to let you into heaven. Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Hey, Leroy didn't make this up. I didn't make this up. It's in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Another group that will not enter into heaven, the effeminate. I mean, uh, 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 men who, who dress like women and, and practice trying to be a woman. You were made to be a man, but you want to be a woman. And, and, and some of you go to church, and you're doing this. Well, the Bible has the answer. You must be born again. And that does not mean giving God a, a verbal uh, uh, confession that Jesus is Lord, but you've got to commit your lifestyle to him. You've got to stop sleeping with men. You've got to stop sleeping uh, with, with some. And the Bible even warns against those who uh, pollute themselves laying with animals. The homosexuals will not be in heaven. The thieves and robbers, if you're practicing a lifestyle, you continue to break into houses uh, uh, like this guy they picked up in Tennessee, Dustina. Uh, I hope he wasn't one of your neighbors, but they picked up a guy in Tennessee this week. He had done a thousand home break-ins, a thousand home break-ins. It's time to lock that sucker up, and it's time for somebody to go visit him and preach the gospel to him. Because if he continues to be a, be a robber, a burglar, even after he gets out of prison, there's no way he's going to get into heaven unless he gets truly born again. The Bible warns against the greedy or the covetous. Uh, uh, greedy and the covetous will not get into, into heaven. The drunkards, the substance abusers, the slanderers. Now, slanderers are those who verbally abuse others. Hey, we, we, got, we got a fellow in high office today. He just verbally abuses others. He just points a finger at others. 
He says he's the greatest thing ever to happen America to America. He's never done anything wrong, and he just beats people up and abuses them, and he calls them uh, whatever he wants to call them. And, and the sad thing is the church supports this guy. And then swindlers and extortioners, swindlers and extortioners will not enter into heaven. That was last week's sermon. If you want to get a copy of that sermon, ladies and gentlemen, go to my website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, or go to my YouTube page. And then today I want to add, I'm going to add. Now you'll say, well, that's a, isn't that enough, Pastor Carter? You've given us 10 people. Well, today I'm going to add 12 more. I'm going to give you a list of 12 more. So just hang in there. I'm not going to uh, give you a whole lot of information about each 12, each of the 12, but I'm going to give you a list of 12 more. You see, we want to make the gospel plain to all people so that there will be no excuse. Romans, in the book of Romans, God says, Thou art inexcusable, O man. In other words, there will be no excuses when we stand before Jesus, no matter how well we have practiced our defense, there will be no excuses if we do not do things the way God said do. There will be no excuses for anyone who did not get born again. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm, I'm talking to folks who have been sitting up in church 30, 40 years and still are stubborn, stiff-necked, rebellious racist, arrogant, proud, you can't tell them anything. I'm talking about these preachers. They're preaching, but you can't tell them anything. I'm talking about people who manipulate others, try to control people's lives. That's witchcraft, ladies and gentlemen. But we've got it in the church, and the church, I mean, it, it's sad to see people get into these high offices and live any way they want and treat people any way they want, yet they think they're going to heaven. There's going to be a day of awakening, ladies and gentlemen, and God's calling us all. He's calling us all right now to repent and make sure, be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Be very sure. Okay, I'm going to just go over a list today. Number one, the ignorant, the ignorant. Ignorant, people who are ignorant of God. They don't know who God is. Well, you say, well, Pastor Carter, that's not fair. How can God destroy the ignorant who never had a chance to hear the gospel? Ladies and gentlemen, that's why he raised up the church to go ye into all the world. He said, go ye. You and I, we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Back to Basics Ministries is a worldwide ministry. We're making the gospel available to people to people all over the world. Now it's up to the world to want to hear it, which leads us to number two, people who choose to be ignorant. Number one is the ignorant. Number two is people who choose to be ignorant. There are people they don't want to know the truth. They won't let you give them the truth. Dustina, they don't want you coming to their meetings talking about God. They'd rather do it a different way. But the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And so there are times we've got to go where we're not wanted. We've got to go and say what thus saith the Lord, even though the, the, the county council or the city council or the, the, the White House or, or the Congress don't want to hear it. Somebody's got to speak up for the Lord because people are dying, ladies and gentlemen. They are dying every day by the numbers. People are, hell is being filled up. Hell's Boundaries are expanding day by day. And, and a lot of people who are breaking into hell, filling hell right now, are people who go to church. They are faithful church attenders. They are uh, 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 good people. They, 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 they uh, pay their taxes. They, they feed the poor, but they don't have a relationship with Jesus. And many are stubborn and rebellious and stiff-necked and hard-headed. Number three. Number three, uh, people who are proud. Nehemiah uh, 9, 16 talks about the people who are proud. He says, but they and their fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hearken not to thy commandments. 
so the proud are not going to enter into heaven. God says a, a proud look I hate. God said I hate the proud look. He hates the proud look. He hates that spirit of pride. And so the Bible tells us to humble ourselves beneath the, the mighty hand of God. Uh, number four, I'm just going to move through this group. We're talking today about 12 people who are not entering to heaven, 12 groups. This is a, in addition, hey, David Carter in Dubai, this is in addition to the 10 groups we talked about last week. People who are stubborn. Number four, the stubborn, they're like the proud, like pride, uh, stubbornness, and, and these other uh, 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 descriptions we're using, they're demonic spirits. They're demonic spirits. Pride is a demon. Stubbornness is a demon. This demon causes people to resist God and causes people to resist the preacher or the preached word. God is going to judge the stubborn. Number five, people who don't care. There are people who just don't care. You say, well, uh, do you go to church? No. Do you, do you love God? No. Uh, can I talk to you about Jesus? No. Well, why not? Because I don't care. There are people, ladies and gentlemen, who just don't care. Satan has blinded them from the truth. They think that they can go through this life without caring, but a day of reckoning is coming. Number six, people who are self-righteous. Self-righteous. You can't tell them anything. Preacher, you can preach till your face turns blue. You can preach till you turn green. They're not going to listen to you because they think they know it all. Churches are filled with people who know it all. We got people in our own households who think they know it all. You can't tell them anything. We've got relatives. You can't tell them anything, and they will remind you. Dustina, they remind you. Ryan, they remind you. Well, I remember when you had, had holes in your stockings. I remember uh, when you had buck teeth. I remember when uh, 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 you, you, you only had one pair of clothes to wear, they, and they have put you down. Then there are people who are, number seven, people who are unbelievers. They're unbelievers. And, and you know what? They go to church every Sunday. Many of them go to church every Sunday, but they don't believe God. Many go for showmanship. Many go to, to be socially approved. Many go because their mama went there. Their daddy went there. But ladies and gentlemen, the church is the body of Christ. The true church is those who have been born again by the Spirit of God. There are many unbelievers. John 3.16 tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. God says believe in Jesus. Believe in him. And not just to give, give head knowledge to God, but you've got to convert, you've got to uh, uh, surrender your whole heart, your whole lifestyle to Jesus. You've got to die to self and follow Jesus. Follow what he taught us to do. Number eight, people who refuse to repent. These are the stiff necked, the hard on it. They refuse to repent. Moses led three million out of Egypt. Millions died in the wilderness, ladies and gentlemen. Millions died in the wilderness. They were hard-hearted. They would not repent. They would not obey God. Number nine, people who are unteachable. They're just plain unteachable. You can't teach them anything. They know it all, and they don't want to hear what you have to say. Well, let's finish this list up. Number 10, people who are fault finders. They always look for faults in others. They cannot see uh, their own faults. They cannot see their own faults because there is a log in their eyes. They're blinded. They can only see your faults and the faults of others. Number 11, people who are hard-hearted. The hard-hearted. The hard-hearted people. They're just mean, proud, arrogant, and relentless in their wickedness. They have no shame and no remorse. The Bible tells us to circumcise the foreskin of our hearts. Yes, the Bible teaches us to circumcise the foreskin of our hearts. We've got to cut through that hardness and expose our hearts to God and the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. 
Then number 12, people who are lazy. Well, lazy, what's that got to do with going to heaven? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, Behold the ant, thou sluggard. The ant, the ant, is, he works all the day long putting up food for himself. He doesn't freeload over anybody. He doesn't look for handouts. He works and works and works and works because he's got a purpose. And God put us on this earth for a purpose. There are people who are just plain lazy. You know what? There are people who are too lazy to go to church. I know people, they live next door to the church and won't go to the church. Too lazy to get up out of bed and to go to church to worship. And then this is a kicker, and I witnessed this at the back, the basics online church. This church is, is a, a wonderful place for the sick and shut in, a wonderful place for those who cannot get out to go to church, a wonderful place for those who have no church to go to. But you know what? There are just people who are just too plain lazy. They are too lazy, Dustina, to even dial a number. They are just too lazy to dial up our dial-up number. They're too lazy. They're, ladies and gentlemen, there are some of you out there, you're just too plain lazy to dial 319-527-4325. You can be born again uh, at this online church or other online churches. All you've got to do is just dial the number. Just dial the number. But no, you're lazy. And you make up excuses. Well, that's not a church. That's an online meeting. That's not a church. Ladies and gentlemen, the church is wherever two or more of us gather in the name of Jesus. God is working through this ministry. So if you find yourself on any of these lists, repent. Just repent. Don't argue with me. Don't send me any hate mail. Don't send me any messages. Don't send me any emails. Don't, 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 don't cut me off. Don't, don't leave the chat room. Don't leave. Just if you find yourself on this list, then just say, Lord, forgive me. I repent. Turn from it. Turn from it. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you to live the life God wants you to live. Praise God. We've talked about, we've talked about people who cannot enter into heaven. I did not make up this list. There are biblical scriptures for uh, everything we taught last week and scriptures for everything I've taught this week, the Bible teaches these things. But you can be born again, and you can stay born again. You can stay saved. You can stay saved. I do not preach once saved, always saved. I do not preach eternal security. I do not preach that you can get saved and live any way you want to, because that is not the truth. Once you're born again, then you ought to... Live for Jesus. People ought to see fruit in your life. And that's why it's important to attend church. That's why it's important to study the Bible. That's why it's important to fellowship. That's why it's important to be under the authority of God-fearing leaders, Holy Ghost-led, Holy Ghost-filled leaders. Praise God. I thank God. Thank God for you. Thank God that you're listening. We're going to hear uh, uh, one more song from uh, Kevin Wilson, and I uh, want to pray, I want to play his song, A Place to Forgive Me. Let's listen to that. A Place to Forgive Me by Kevin Wilson.
What could I say? Tell me what could I've done to deserve God's one and only Son? I don't understand it, and it still amazes me that you found a place to forgive me. The cross where Jesus died. Please forgive them, Father. He cried aloud on the hill where the Lord's blood ran down. Thank God now you found a place to forgive me. That's our friend Kevin S. Wilson, um, Spiritual High Ministries in Kentucky. And Kevin has given us permission to play his songs. That song is A Place to Forgive Me. Thank God that he found a place to forgive us. Forgive us. And that was on the cross with Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I pray that these messages, this ministry is helping you, encouraging you. And I thank God for your reports and your testimonies and see you growing in God, and, and pray to God I continue to use you mightily. I'm just so thankful, and I thank all of you for coming on live, and I uh, just want to invite anyone who's on for the first time today. If you're on this ministry for the first time today, I'd just like to ask you to uh, unmute your phone and identify yourself and speak to us, and, and, and if this, me this service has helped you today, just give us an encouraging word. Who is there? Anyone who would come want to come in and introduce yourself? I've seen different uh, numbers in the window this evening, this morning, and so. And I want to thank you. If you, if you don't feel like you want to come on, if you're shy, we thank you and hope you'll come again and bring somebody else with you. Praise God. We always like to invite our friend from Dubai, way across the ocean, way across the airwaves, David Carter from Dubai. David, come on and say hello to us. It's about 10 p.m. in Dubai. Come on, say hello to us, would you please? Hello, Pastor Carter. Hey, Brother David. Hey, awesome word today. Thank God for the word. I was truly blessed by the word today. Awesome word, sir. Awesome word. It's always an awesome word, so I, I'm glad to jump on and, and listen and be ministered to. It, you know, that was an awesome word, you know. Thank Praise God for God. the word, and thank God for the ministry. That was powerful. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. We hope you're doing well, and your sister Nyamka and all the people in Dubai, I pray that you're doing well. Yes. Yes, we are, we are doing well, you know, just working and, and, and um, doing some things out here. Um, I'm going to contact you um, uh, um, probably this week. I want to share some things with you that God uh, um, shared with me um, concerning the ministry. We're about to um, launch some things. So I just want to share that with, you know, one about you. Um, very so good, uh, very I'll be good. contacted. I just want to I'll be contacting you this week sometime. That would be good. I'll, I'll look out for that, and I'll, I'm always glad to uh, talk with you on a one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Okay, sounds great. Sounds and great. we help you in whatever way we can. Continue to be blessed of the Lord. Well, praise God. Ryan, Ryan, wasn't that a good service today? Uh, yes, Pastor Carr. Yes, that was, uh, that was an awesome word today. And uh, and I hope somebody, I'm, I'm, I know somebody got that message today. And I, and I, I 
really hope and pray that people come to the Lord and just, you know, the question is, do you want eternal damnation or do you want eternal life? And I believe I told somebody once before, I really personally don't want to burn in a lake of fire. And I hope no one else does either, but, you know. <clears throat> but, you know, we can't force people to do it. You know, they got to choose free will and stuff like that. But Man, I, I don't I even people. like it. I don't even like it, Ryan, when I burn, if I burn my finger on the stove, if I touch a hot stove, man, I don't even like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, the best well, comes up it. a couple of days later, I don't like that. Mm. Yeah, if, yeah, if nobody likes that feeling, you're really not going to like the electric fire. No, 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 no. If you, if you can't stand a little burn on the stove, you don't want to play with God. Uh-uh. Get saved, uh, everybody. Get saved. People listening to this recording, get saved. Look, we preach this because we fear God and also because we love you. We fear God and we love you. And look, we don't just preach this. We practice what we preach. We practice what we preach. We want to be practicers of what we preach. We just don't want to be mouthing off. We want to practice. We want to live what we preach. Praise God. Anyone else have any comments, any questions, anything you'd like to share? We thank you all for participating today. Anyone else? I want to give a shout-out hey, to Pat. my friend Michael down in Tennessee. Michael, God bless you and your family, man. Hi, how you doing? Fine. Praise God. Praise God. Is this 931, the 931 number? Yeah, this is Michael. Uh, we had to use his phone because okay, I got good. it off on my laptop. So good, good. <laughs> this is good. Michael and Destina. Hey, okay, Michael and Destina. Hey, Michael, we're proud of you, man. We're proud of you, man, for uh, uh, providing the leadership in your home and and and, and setting an example uh, for what men ought to do. And I just want to commend you, my brother. Okay, I just want to commend you. you. I ain't into your business, but I just want to commend you. And I encourage you to keep up the great work. Thank you. Okay, man? Bye. And if I ever roll if I ever roll through uh if I roll through Tennessee, I'm gonna be looking for you, man. Is that okay? All right, I'll, see you. I'll see you then. I love you, man. God bless you. Okay. Everybody, have a good day. Father God, we thank you and bless you and honor you and praise you. Bless each and every one. Bless our nation. Bless our president, our leaders, the nation, and the nations. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise you. Amen. 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 God bless each and every one of you. And have a great day.